the Visionary Health Podcast. Welcome to the Visionary Health Podcast, where we explore the latest trends and innovations in healthcare and wellness. In today's episode, we'll be delving into the world of manual lymphatic drainage therapy and its incredible benefits for post-surgery, cancer rehabilitation, immune system support, and stress relief. I'm your host, Paul, and today we have our special guest, Dr. Andy from Miskawan's Rehabilitation Center, who will be sharing with us his wealth of knowledge and experience in this fascinating field. Dr. Andy has been practicing alternative therapies, uh, in particular manual lymphatic drainage for over 30 years, and has helped countless patients achieve optimal health and wellness through this holistic approach. Join us as we discover the power of natural healing and the role of manual lymphatic drainage in modern healthcare. It's time to take your health into your own hands and embark on a journey towards a better you. Let's get started. Hi, Andy. How are you? Hi, Paul. I'm fine. Nice to see you. Yeah, it's good to see you too. Yes, I'm fine. We're, so we're, today we're talking about uh, the topic of manual lymphatic drainage and um, you're the expert. Uh, so I was just wondering what is it and how does it work? Yeah, the manual lymphatic drainage is a special way of massage and it's so it's actually activating the lymphatic system. The lymphatic system is the cleaning system in our body. So it's all over our body. And the job of the lymphatic system is to remove swelling, liquid, hematomas. And also it's a very important part of the immune system. And with this special manual lymphatic drainage massage, we can activate the lymphatic system and support it. So does, does that mean that if somebody's sick, um, it's a, is it a good idea to have... Lymphatic drain, manual lymphatic drainage, or is that a bad idea? Um, it depends a little bit how you define being sick. So, for example, after injuries, surgeries, or also in the case of some cancer um, diseases, it's very, very effective and it will support the healing and support the immune system. So it's a very effective treatment. If you just have a normal cold, the manual lymphatic drainage will not help too much. Besides, if you have a lot of swelling around your nose and everything is blocked, it can help also with this. Okay. So, I mean, I I know that, um, you know, I was told that when I used to work out a lot, that if I had a, a cold, that was okay to still work out. If it was a head cold, it was still okay to work out. But if it was a viral infection that I shouldn't work out because it could, the virus, this is how it was explained to me, it could make its way into my heart muscle. Now, I don't know the, the scientific basis of that and how much of that's true, but does it mean that somebody with, a say, um, a virus shouldn't have something like manual lymphatic drainage, but if they have a bacterial infection, it's fine? Or is there a distinction? Uh, does it matter? Yeah, Um, normally important is if you have a bacterial infection, you should actually not do the manual lymphatic drainage because it can go faster to the heart. Um, So once it's covered and fine, then it's no problem anymore. But in the beginning, if you have a bacterial infection, you should not do the manual lymphatic drainage. With virus infections, it's normally not a big problem. Oh, so it's the opposite to what I was told with just working out. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. And so the manual lymphatic drainage is really good for recovery from uh, physical, like physical injuries, uh, whether that be working out or surgery. What's the, the most interesting case you've ever come across? So I'm using manual lymphatic drainage already more than 30 years. And I also worked in professional sports. I worked in Germany in football, Bundesliga. And there I used it already after injuries. And it was so interesting. The players twist their ankle, have a big swelling and pain. And if you then use the lymphatic drainage, It improves the healing so much. It's much faster. And this is unbelievable how it works. Also, after surgeries, I worked together with some doctors and they made a knee surgery, for example. 
And one hour after the surgery, I started already the lymphatic drainage and then did it again the next morning. And then the doctor came to check it. He took the bandage off and he said, wow, how is that possible? There is not even swelling anymore. So it's a very, very interesting treatment and it supports the tissue healing at the highest level. So is that in like, were you using other things like ice or heat in, in when you were doing that or was it just lymphatic drainage? Um, actually, we should not use ice after injuries or after surgeries. It delays the healing process and also the quality of the new tissue is getting worse. Another important point is that the ice also stops the lymphatic system um, in working. So it doesn't make any sense to use ice, but I always combine the lymphatic drainage with heat applications, which makes so it much more effective. Right. So that's, but that's a, that's a, a very different from what we all get told is like to ice things when you sprain an ankle, you should ice something, but you're saying that's not the correct thing to do now. It's, it's, you should apply yes. heat and, and get lymphatic, manual lymphatic drainage. Yes, this ice topic started, I think it was in 1978 by Dr. Merkin, and he recommended to use ice after sports injuries or general injuries. And since then, everybody's doing this. But if we really look at the physiology of tissue healing, it doesn't make any sense. And the research in the last years absolutely proved this. So please don't use ice after injuries or after surgeries. But people still do. Like people, they're still yes, doing it. Yes, yes, yes. So they are used to this and still, yeah, many professors teach this at the university. But yeah, we should really be up to date. It's very important, especially if you are a lecturer, a teacher, it's very important to be up to date read the latest research papers, and sometimes we have to change. You know, in 2014 already, this Dr. Merkin, who started everything, made a quote and he said, okay, I was wrong. It's not good <laughs> to use ice. Yeah, and if he can change, then we all can change. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's, that's good. I, will, uh, I won't use ice anymore. I'll, uh, I'll use heat, but let's get it back to the, the topic the, of manual lymphatic yes. drainage. Um, like, are there any special techniques to it? Like, what, what, is, what, what should someone expect when they're having it done? You know, the good thing with the manual lymphatic drainage is that it's very soft and gentle, very relaxing, and to have a real effect, you don't even have to go into the injured area directly. You know, so if there is an injury or surgery and there's still a bandage around the area, you can work on other body parts to activate the lymphatic system and have a very good effect without going into this area because normally people are scared if you want to touch this. But even then, if you go into the area and touch it, it's so gentle that people don't feel any pain. Yeah, you, you know that if the child falls down, normally you go and you wrap gentle over it to activate some fibers. We call this gate control mechanism. So the people don't feel the pain anymore. And the same we will do with the manual lymphatic drainage. So it's a very, very nice and gentle way to treat people. Is that, is that uh, like from what you just said then, I know that uh, if someone hurts themselves, you know, you want to rub them, hug them, you know, and, and just you know, console them. Is that something that we just do naturally to help someone and, and that has that effect on them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very interesting, you know. So if we touch them, we stimulate some fibers and these fibers come much faster let's say it in an easy way, to the brain, so it covers the pain and it works, wow. yeah? So <laughs> yeah. also in the lymphatic drainage, we are using it and so it's a very positive effect. 
is is there any um when you're looking for someone what should you what should you look for like if you're looking for a physiotherapist or or a, I mean, what what should you look for like you just look up manual lymphatic drainage or is it a specific sports massage person that you should look for yeah normally the technique is called manual lymphatic drainage because it's done manually there are now some machines who also say they have the same effect but actually it's not the same and it's not so specific and individualized so it should be a manual made by the hand lymphatic drainage and normally it's a further education training what you have to do after your degree and then of course like always it's a lot of experience doing this for years and have experience in the field also it makes a big difference if you need it now let's say for after sports injury or if you need it after cancer where they removed some lymph nodes so it's a different feel and field and it's always good to have an expert in this area and does it like if someone's having it is there a, a, a specific duration that you'd have it like once a week once a day for six mm -hmm. weeks or or does it just you just keep doing it until the it's repaired and all the the recovery is complete yeah it's very individual so for example when i worked in professional sports it happened the injury the surgery and then we did it every day sometimes two times a day to really bring this person back as fast as possible in a normal setting it's common to do it maybe three times a week two times a week but in some cases just for to maintain for example after surgery with cancer relation um, it's good to do it maybe once a week to activate the lymphatic system and this can be enough so it really depends on the case and treatments medical treatment should always be individual and personalized that's one of the most important things yeah and and so if you have it done and you're like you, you come out of your um session and that do you do you have to drink water i know that when i have a massage they sort of encourage you to drink water straight after or or something is that is that the same type of thing or is it different so what we are doing with the lymphatic drainage is that we are activating the system to remove the liquid out of your body like if you have swelling and most people report that after the lymphatic drainage they have to go to the restroom and yeah so then they have mm -hmm. to pee and of course then it's always good to refill water right. <laughs> and yeah. i think it's always a problem nowadays that most people don't drink enough right so right drinking water is always good yeah it is it is and and what about with say you mentioned cancer people with cancer who have uh surgery and then you can have they can have lymph manual lymphatic drainage to sort of speed the recovery what about uh like after pregnancy um is that something that it can help yeah so if um, women then after pregnancy still have uh, swollen legs what we see very often the lymphatic drainage can help to remove the swelling and again activate the system that it starts working normally so it's something very effective and of course you know if you have swelling you cannot move normal you cannot walk normal the people don't feel good so it has many problems and so it's always important to bring the body into a normal balance again okay and you and you, you, you sort of allude to it but it's it has a detoxification effect on the body is that that is that what happens or is it stimu purely stimulating immune system um no it also has a cleaning effect and detoxing effect so it's always good to activate the system and this is our cleaning system in the body and part of our immune system so we okay. always should be interested that it works 100 percent, which mostly it is doing this but 
we can stimulate it, activate it, and people feel better. You know, sometimes people come, they say, oh, I always have some swelling around my eyes, in my face. And so this is nothing really serious. But if you do a manual lymphatic drainage, it disappears and they feel better. So also mentally, it has a very positive effect. Yeah. Or it can help to recover after sports. You know, also there, it's nothing really medical that you have a big problem. But if you, you know it, Paul, you are an active guy, if you do sports, and then the next day or the day after, you feel sore, delayed muscle yep. soreness. Yeah. And at the end, what's happening is that we have small micro injuries in the muscle and we have a little bit swelling, a little bit inflammation. So what to do to improve this, that you come back again, that you feel better. And I, by myself, made a research and published it in 2006 in the American Journal of Physical Medicine and Rehabilitation about this topic. And I could prove that with manual lymphatic drainage, we can improve the recovery after sports and reduce delayed onset muscle soreness. So it's not something you need to, like you need, don't need to be injured really. It's like to, to have it. It's something that if you just have an active lifestyle, it's good to do just as a preventative Absolutely. and remeasure. Absolutely. And one very positive effect is it's very relaxing. Really, people right. feel better. They really lay down and the relaxation is so deep. And normally the time for lymphatic drainage is 45 minutes. So this is also a very good time where you can relax and yeah, really yeah. let go. I was, I was, you just mentioned before about people have like puffy eyes and it just made me think about, you know, that people have uh, plastic surgery and facelifts and all that sort of thing. And they have, that's, you know, it's an injury to their face. And I was just wondering, like, um, is it common that people with that, like who've had plastic surgery, do they have, do they get manual lymphatic drainage done? Um, it's common a lot in Europe where the lymphatic drainage is really a big, big topic. Here in Asia now, it's not so common, but I work already together with some plastic surgeons and the results are very, very positive. You know how it is. Yeah, they have the surgery after it's swollen, everything is blue. Mm. And if you then do the manual lymphatic drainage, the healing process is much faster and so the people feel better, the recovery time is shorter and the quality also of the new tissue is much better. Right. Wow. I haven't heard of that before. Does it have uh, any effect on like people with um, who have headaches, like constant headaches or migraines, anything like that? Does it help with that sort of thing? Yes, absolutely. Um in when was it 2000 yeah 2001 i gave a further education training for a clinic this clinic was specialized in headaches and migraine treatment and we found out that if you do the manual lymphatic drainage the people feel much better after mostly the people tell oh i feel like a pressure also in my head and after we did the lymphatic drainage, they had the feeling the pressure was reduced. So what we created was a combination treatment of manual lymphatic drainage, activation of the lymphatic system, relaxation of muscles, which are connected to headache, and joint mobilizations of the cervical spine area. And with this combination, we had great success and the people were very happy with the treatment. So wow. this means also you can combine the manual lymphatic drainage also with other techniques. For example, if I have an injured athlete, I, the first treatment maybe is only lymphatic drainage. The second maybe also. The third one is maybe only 30 minutes lymphatic drainage and 15 minutes exercises, joint mobilization techniques. And then if 
the patient feels better and the swelling is going down, we change more and more the way we treat him. This combination is also very effective. And like I was just thinking before, like if we've got this lymph system through our body and we've got our, mm-hmm. our circulatory system, like our blood vessels, our veins, arteries, our heart yes. pumps our blood. Uh, is there nothing that pumps our lymph around? Yeah. The lymphatic system is really unbelievable. The lymphatic system has own muscles, and this is pumping the liquid from one part, we call it ganglion, from one part of the lymph vessel to the next, and to the next. So it's like a pumping system. Additionally, it will be supported by the muscles in the body so every time when we move it also compresses the lymphatic system you know the situation you are flying somewhere and you are sitting and you are not moving Mm -hmm. and after a while you feel your legs are swollen because you don't have the pumping of your muscles you don't have the movement so this also helps and stimulates the lymphatic system So actually, we have the movement of the body and the pumping of the muscles. And then additionally, we have the own muscle system, pumping system in the lymphatic system. And this together is responsible to move the liquid in the lymphatic system. And then at the end, going back into the heart. So the liquid which is collected by the lymphatic system ends and going back into the heart, into the bloodstream. And then what, then it gets circulated, what, to the, I guess, to the urine and eventually, and then excreted, does it, as, as toxin? Exactly, exactly, yeah. Then it goes the normal way. And so the lymphatic system starts in the tissue and ends actually in the heart into the uh, Ah. going into the bloodstream so it's not a closed circle like the blood circle right so if does that mean that if someone's like we we know we we sort of we can see people in society who are you know you look at people and they they might be overweight or something or they just don't move much and they look they don't look that healthy Mm -hmm. is like we all know that you know to be healthy you should exercise and eat well and, and do all those good things. But um, I never thought about someone who's inactive and it actually affecting the toxicity of their body by, because their lymph uh, system's not working, because they're not moving. That's, that'd be correct, right? They, if you move, yes. your lymph system's working. Absolutely. Absolutely. If you move, your lymph system is working better. And there was even a research a few years ago where they could prove that obese people also can lose weight and get more healthy if they get manual lymphatic drainage. So very, very interesting really? point. Yeah. <clears throat> so just so the lymph can actually help people lose weight, just the movement of the lymph around the yes, body. Yes, yes, yes. So this is not that we have a lot of evidence for this. It's quite a new area, yeah. but... The first research papers show clearly that there is an effect, which is very positive. But oh. that does not mean that if you are overweight, that you don't have to eat healthy and that you don't have to move and yeah. just lay down and get and the have... lymphatic drainage. <laughs> that would be too easy. And yeah. this also will not solve the problem. Yeah. Right. Like yeah. for these people, it's really about a lifestyle change, it's a combination of different things, of course, exercise, of course, nutrition, but the lymphatic system, the manual lymphatic drainage can help and support this. So it's a good combination. So, I mean, I've got other questions, but if if someone is overweight and you sometimes see people who are overweight, they might have skin conditions. Um, Yes. Could that skin condition be because they're not moving if they were to, even if they were just to go out for a walk once a day or move that skin <clears throat> condition might clear itself up because their body's moving around it... 
Yes. So it has something to do with the movement, but very important with skin conditions, especially with these overweight people, is the metabolism, you know. So the blood, blood flow, and then the removal of um, tissue, damaged blood cells, liquid through the lymphatic system, is this, if this whole metabolism is not working well, then the skin looks different. It looks unhealthy. And we've seen this many, many times also with people with diabetes problems. You know people with diabetes, when you look at their legs, especially the lower legs, that the skin is looking unhealthy and not like getting enough blood and oxygen. And if we use the manual lymphatic drainage, you see that the color of the skin is changing after a few sessions. And it looks more healthy because the whole metabolism works better. So right. with metabolism, I mean the blood flow, the removal, oxygen transportation, nutrition transportation, this all will be improved. Yeah, and okay. it will reduce the swelling in this area. And does it... Like, does it work better with younger people? Is age uh, an issue? No, 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 actually not. No. The effect if we do the manual lymphatic drainage is always very positive. As long as the therapist is doing it correct, we have a very positive effect on the system. Well, that's good. Okay. Well, uh, Andy, I think that really wraps up all my questions. Do you, I don't know... Uh, do you have anything else that people might be interested in hearing about lymphatic drainage, something that I haven't touched on? Um, actually, one point is for me that I'm still sometimes surprised, even if I speak to doctors and other therapists, that they are that their knowledge is very limited about the lymphatic system and that we can use this. You know, if a year ago I met a, a plastic surgeon and he did a surgery on a friend and I asked him, what do you think about the lymphatic drainage? And he was, oh, yeah, maybe, I don't know exactly. So I talked with him, I explained to him and he said, okay, let's try it. And then he was really surprised about the results. But why is it still such a secret? you know, and <laughs> I want exactly. the people to know more about it and really try it and see the positive results because yeah. it's such a fantastic um, treatment and it can help so many people with their problems. And if there is help, so use it. Yeah, well, exactly. But I'm just wondering what sort of reduction, like you say it, uh, it, one of the strongest things about lymphatic drainage is that it reduces recovery time. And I'm just wondering, like, if you don't have recover, uh, sorry, don't have manual lymphatic drainage done versus having it done, what's the difference in that recovery time? Is it, um, is it weeks or what's the, what's your typical you mean, experience? Yeah, this this depends a lot on 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 the surgery, you know, or on the injury. Yeah. Um, it can be really days, weeks, but, you know, some, like, for example, we talked about muscle soreness. Normally, the recovery time is three, four days if you have a big muscle soreness. So if you would use the lymphatic drainage, it's maybe only two days, yeah, or one day. Yeah? Okay, so it's, but it's almost half, you, half the time. Yeah, but if you have an, a knee surgery and then it's really a big difference that uh, people feel like, oh, it's already better. Um, and we talk about a one week difference yeah, in the beginning. Yeah, I was just wondering too, is it, is it the sort of thing that you can do on yourself or is, is it, does that not work? Um, it is possible also to learn some techniques to do it by yourself but it will be never have the same effect. So first of all, it's not so easy like it looks. And yeah, yeah it's not the same. It's just not yeah, the same. Yeah, I know that when I so try to massage myself. it should be done myself. by a professional therapist, 
but most therapists also show one or two techniques and tell the people, okay, just do this two, three times a day. Yeah, I know when I try to massage my legs or something after a workout, it never feels the same and it never no. never does the same thing as having a proper massage. <laughs> absolutely, yeah. absolutely. That's that's why this is a profession, yeah, and people have to yeah. study it uh, many years, yeah. If it would be so easy, everybody could do it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, um, I think that that wraps it up for today, Andy. Uh, thanks very much for your time. Um, it's You're been welcome. very informative. And, yeah, it was uh, a pleasure. The next one. And let's look forward to the next session and let's see which topic we will talk about next time. Okay. Thanks again. Have a nice day. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you for tuning in to the Visionary Health Podcast, where we explore the latest breakthroughs in health and wellness to help you achieve your best life. We hope that today's episode has inspired you to take action towards your health goals and provided you with valuable insights and knowledge. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions for future episodes, please feel free to reach out to us via our website or social media channels. We value your feedback and would love to hear from you. Remember to subscribe to our podcast on your favorite platform so you don't miss out on any upcoming episodes. And if you enjoyed this episode, please leave us a review to help us reach more people. We believe that true health and wellness is about more than just the absence of disease. It's about optimizing your physical, mental, and emotional well-being to live your best life. So keep exploring, keep learning, and keep striving towards your vision of a healthier, happier you. Thank you again for listening to the Visionary Health Podcast. Until next time, stay healthy. Discover the secrets to a healthier and happier life by tuning into Nisquan Health on Instagram and Facebook. Our team is dedicated to bringing you the latest insights on functional health and well-being. Join us on this exciting journey and be a part of a growing community of like-minded individuals. Visit miskawanhealth.com to learn more about our mission and access a wealth of educational resources.